When I was looking for a microphone, I was at first looking for a Heil P40 microphone because one of my favorite podcasters, Leo Laporte, uses that. The two different types of microphones I'm talking about here are dynamic and condenser. That one is a condenser microphone, requires a 48 volt DC power source, okay? A dynamic microphone does not require a power source. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, for instance, the Heil P40 microphone um, is very, very directional. If you even slightly move off axis with that microphone, you will lose your, 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 your volume. It also has a very low, deep um, bottom end, very, very warm, um, great for radio, but not so great for vocals and um, guitars or pianos or things like that, because you really have to be speaking right down the barrel of that mic, and you really have to be right on it all the time. You can't move around. So if you're doing radio or podcasting, and that's all you're doing, then that microphone would be great. The thing is, is it's three or four hundred dollars. That doesn't include the shock mount and, and a stand, okay, and a pop filter. So, you know, you have to really look at what you're doing. Um, I'm not knocking the Heil P40, but if you're on a budget and you're doing podcasting and music and voiceovers and a variety of other things, then the MXL 990 is perfect. And in my opinion, it sounds just as good as the Heil P40 when it comes to voiceover. That's my opinion, okay? Now, I told you that there was two different types of microphones that we were gonna talk about today. And I wanted to get a little bit into the differences between the two and how they work. Now, if you're just looking for a microphone review, that part of the video is over. This is the second part of the video where I'm going to talk about the two types of microphones that we're dealing with and how they actually work. So this is a little bit of a lesson here, I guess, if you want to call it that. Okay. Now, the most common type of microphone is a dynamic microphone. A dynamic microphone is kind of like a little generator. Okay. It generates its own, um, its own power when you speak into it. Now, um, if you can imagine a generator, a generator has a, um, an axis with coils wrapped around it, okay, coils of wire, and then around the inside of the casing of the, of the generator, there's magnets. So when the axis spins, when the shaft of the motor spins, the coils spin, the coils of wire spin around, and then because they're spinning around within the field of the magnets, there's electricity generated, okay? And that's how they, that's how they work. Um, a microphone is much the same, where when you speak into it, it vibrates and generates electrical signals that correspond to the vibrations coming from your voice or whatever sound source you're using. Now here's how a dynamic microphone works. All microphones have a diaphragm. The diaphragm is the thing that vibrates when you speak. It's kind of the opposite um, from a speaker, where the speaker has a cone of paper or polypropylene or whatever it's made out of. When that vibrates, it gives off the sound. It's kind of the opposite with a microphone. The sound comes in, vibrates the diaphragm, and creates the electrical signals. And here's how a dynamic microphone works. So you would have your diaphragm, something like this which is attached to the, you know, the frame of the microphone or the casing of the microphone. And this is where when you speak into this, this diaphragm will vibrate. Okay. Now attached to the diaphragm, and this is a dynamic microphone, remember, attached to the diaphragm is a cylindrical fixture. So it would, it, this would be a cylinder like, um, well, we'll just draw it like this so you can sort of see it's kind of like a cylinder, like a toilet paper roll, okay? And so around the cylinder, there is a coil of wire. I hope you guys can see this from all the way over there. Okay, coil of wire. Okay, so there's your wires coming off. Okay, and here's your diaphragm where when you speak into it, it vibrates. Okay, now when the, when the diaphragm vibrates, it also vibrates the coil of wire. Okay, now, what do you suppose is in, stuck inside the coil of wire? 
a magnet. So inside of here, and inside the coil, all inside there, inside the cylinder, there is a permanent magnet. So now, when you speak into the microphone, you vibrate the diaphragm, the, vi the diaphragm vibrates the coil of wire, but the magnet doesn't vibrate, it stays still. So what you've got is the coil of wire vibrating against the magnetism of the magnet. And what that does, just like with the generator, it creates electrical signals. Now with a generator, you might get electrical, electrical signals, something like this. Very regular AC electrical signals. But with a microphone, when you speak into it, you're creating all kinds of different types of vibrations. So the, the electrical signal you're going to get from here is going to be more what, like what you've seen, like a sound wave. Okay? And that's taken down the wire into the mixer or amplifier, whatever it is. It's amplified and it's either recorded or it's taken out through a loudspeaker. And that's how a dynamic microphone works. Okay? So let's rub this. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just flip this over. It should be easier. A condenser microphone works like this, okay? If I have a capacitor, if you don't know what a capacitor is, it's an electric component that basically has two plates very close to each other like this. Metal, aluminum, whatever they're made out of, okay? And what you, what you can do is you can take this capacitor and connect it up to a power source, like a battery, like this, okay? So what this will do is the voltage from the battery, the current from the battery, will charge these plates. They'll become a potential voltage between these two plates, like a static charge kind of thing, more or less, okay? So that when, when I remove the, so let's say there's, let's say there's uh, three volts here, three volts here, and I hook it up to the capacitor, and the capacitor charges up, it takes about, you know, a fraction of a second to charge a capacitor, okay? And then we take off the battery, leaving just the capacitor. Now the capacitor has three volts charged in it. And that three volts will stay there until you discharge it by either shorting out these two wires or hooking up a light bulb or some other device that will dissipate the, the current out of the capacitor. So if you were to draw a graph like this, okay, and this is three volts, the capacitor, just sitting there like this, is going to stay, if this, if this is time, time is this way, voltage is this way, the capacitor over a period of time is going to stay at 3 volts. It's not going to change. It's going to stay a constant 3 volts. Okay? But, if I was to take one of these plates and move it back and forth, in other words, move it closer to the other plate and then further away from the other plate and closer and move it back and forth like that. What I'm going to end up with, again, here's our graph, 3 volts here. This is time. When I move the plate back and forth, just one of the plates closer and further away from the other plate with the 3 volt charge across the two plates, what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to, instead of a steady voltage, you're going to have a fluctuating voltage. Okay? So it'll go to 4 volts, 2 volts, 4 volts, 2 volts, 4 volts, 2, and so on. Okay? So that's basically what will happen. Now, now that you understand that, it's not time for recess yet. Settle down. <laughs> okay. Now, now that you understand that, a condenser microphone is basically a capacitor. So you have your two plates. You've got one plate here 
that's fixed. It doesn't move on the back of the microphone. And on the front of the microphone where you speak, you have a very, very thin plate. Can you see that? Okay. Now, these plates are hooked up to a power supply. And it just happens to be 48 volts DC. Okay, my writing is terrible. 48 volts DC. Let's see if I can get that. <laughs> Good enough. Okay, 48 volts DC across these two plates. And if no vibrations are occurring, then those two plates will stay at 48 volts. All right, but as soon as you speak into the microphone, this really thin plate vibrates in and out, just like we showed you a minute ago with that capacitor. It will vibrate in and out, and it's going to change that 48 volts in correspondence with the vibration. So let's tr go back to our little graph here. So our little graph, okay? So here's our 48 volts right, right here, let's say. And if no sound is entering into the microphone, then it will be a steady 48 volts. Okay, like this. Right? But as soon as you speak into the microphone and start the vibrations, then that voltage is then going to fluctuate with the same patterns that your voice is creating. In other words, that the, the change in the voltage will correspond to the different vibrations of your vocal cords or of whatever instrument it is that you're playing into the microphone. And that change in voltage is then filtered, the 48 volts is stripped away, and what you've got left is just those changes. And that's what's amplified and goes through your equipment and out the speaker or wherever it's going. Now, the advantage to a condenser microphone over a dynamic microphone is that because a dynamic microphone has the, dia the diaphragm and the coil, that coil actually has a little bit of weight to it. It's usually made of copper wire. Um, it's got cardboard or some sort of material that it's wrapped around. So that can cause the, the vibrations to be slightly impeded. In other words, it can't vibrate as quickly as something that's not as heavy. So in general, a dynamic microphone doesn't have the same high frequency response that a condenser mic would because a condenser mic only has this really thin, I mean, this, is, this, di this uh, one plate here that vibrates is so, so thin that if you were to touch it, it would probably break or crumble. So it's so thin and has so little weight that it can vibrate very quickly. And when it can vibrate very quickly, it can create extremely high, crisp sounds. Okay? And that's why condenser microphones are known for their very crisp, high-frequency response. All right? Um, the downside is that they do require the 48-volt power supply, <coughs> whereas the dynamic microphone does not. Dynamic microphones can be used anywhere. You don't need a power supply. You can plug them into your camera. You can plug them into anything and they'll just work. Um, so they're very versatile. They're also very rugged because th they're not made of such delicate materials. Um, whereas a condenser microphone, this diaphragm is very fragile. If you blow into it too hard, if wind comes along and hits it, you could damage it. And, or if you drop it too. Well, you shouldn't drop any microphone actually. But So... Um, you know, that's the difference between the two. There's benefits to both types. And depending on what you're doing, you're going to want to choose the type that suits your, your needs. Okay? If you're just doing voiceover work and you need the surrounding room noise to be, to be uh, filtered out, then you might want to get yourself a highly directional dynamic microphone. Um, on the other hand, if you need to have that versatility of being able to move around, you want to do vocals, you don't want to have it right up to your mouth, um, 
and you want to be able to have you know different instruments and have it pick up more sounds in the room, then you're going to want to go with the condenser microphone. Okay, so that's the main difference between the two, and that's how microphones work, at least those types of microphones. There are other types of, of microphones that are less uh, common um, that we won't get into, but um, these are the two, two main types. And I'll just give you one more uh, little s sample with this microphone here before I go so that you can hear the nice, beautiful, um, <clears throat> deep sound that it has. Um, you can get quite far away from it. It still picks up nicely. It is quite directional, um, but it's not so bad that you can't move from side to side as you're performing or doing whatever it is that you're doing. If you're playing guitar or an instrument like a, a, um, a violin or a, a saxophone where you do move around a little bit, it's not going to be that sensitive to that. It's quite toler tolerating in that department. So that's all. That's, that's the microphone that I chose. MXL 990 microphone, excellent for the money. If you're looking for a microphone, I recommend you check one of these out. And as I said before, I'd rather have several of these than one of those expensive microphones that you can get. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And um, <clears throat> I've used this microphone on several of my <clears throat> videos so far. I've been very happy with it. And on my Justin.TV uh, broadcast, I use this microphone exclusively, and it always does a good job, and it sounds really good on there, too. Okay? Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about microphones or audio in general, um, give, me a, give me a shout. Leave a message down below. Okay? Thanks for watching. This is Craig Tube. See you guys soon. Take care.